Hi, this is Jeff Hansen, the developer of Focus 15 Investing. This video is part three of a three-part series on performance expectations. This part covers the known biases of Focus 15 Investing model portfolios. I've covered the first two topics in other videos. This video covers the known biases in the performance patterns. The objective of the model portfolios is to avoid major losses and to participate in the upside in the stock market. So point number A, we're avoiding some of the losses in that area. We're avoiding the losses in this second decline over this time period. But most of this time period is indicated by a strong stock market and we're participating in that strong stock market. But there are biases to the strategy and there are periodic losses and underperformance relative to the comparative benchmarks that I've mentioned in a prior video. And subscribers should be aware of those biases because when losses occur compared to the identified comparative benchmarks, a reasonable question is, is the strategy still working? Is something wrong? Is it broken? The first bias is underperformance in the late stages of an ascending market. Now this is a chart that I use in other videos describing the investment strategy. But this is a long-term perspective on the stock market. The horizontal axis is time, and the brown line represents the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The leftmost point is 1918, so about 100 years ago. And the period shown by the cursor is the Roaring Twenties, the big decline in the 1930s, moving higher during the war, moving up to 1966, flat during the period of high inflation, then starting to move higher in 1981. The current period is shown on the right. The traded model portfolio is shown on the green line, and the green line is clearly superior to the brown line, but it doesn't go up all the time, and, and it's not a smooth ride all the way over the last 100 years. The green line does a good job of avoiding the losses in the Great Depression, and this particular series, the green series, allows the shorting of the stock market. So we actually get positive returns when the market goes down. The purpose of that is to highlight where the investment strategy is doing well or poorly compared to the ups and downs in the stock market. But it does well during the A period when there are losses in the stock market in the 1930s. And it does well in the 1970s during the high inflationary period. The stock market is basically flat for many years and the green line moves up a bit. The green line continues to move higher in the 2000s when the market is moving up and down but generally trending sideways. The traded portfolio continues to move higher when the stock market peaks in 2000, declines in 2003, peaks again in 2007, declines in 2009, and then moves higher. But the loss avoidance component of the Focus 15 strategy does really well when the market has losses, but the traded portfolio underperforms in the late stage of an ascending market. And we can see that very clearly at the end of the Roaring Twenties. The stock market moves higher at an accelerating pace, and the traded portfolio actually flattens out quite a bit. So buying the traded portfolio over this time period would not be as good as just holding the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So in the late stage of an ascending market, the traded portfolio underperforms the buy and hold portfolio, or simply the stock market. We see that in the late 1920s. We see that in the late 1940s and 50s, there's a compression of returns. We see that in the internet boom in the late 1990s, and we even see that in the 2000s. Now, these are known biases, and this performance pattern has been in place for 100 years, and our assumption is that that will continue. And we understand why that underperformance takes place, but there's not a, a reliable, systematic way to adjust for that, looking narrowly at this particular series. We understand what drives that and take steps to mitigate that bias. But that bias is there, and when the underperformance takes place, it's just important to be patient during that period of underperformance. The second bias that's known is declines after performance spikes. And we can see different spikes in returns in the stock market. The most notable one is in 1987. And this is, again, the Dow Jones Industrial Average beginning in 1918, 
moving across here. This is the 1987 period. This is 2007 and the current period. The stock market moved higher in 1987 and then declined significantly. The traded portfolio experiences those declines and that's taken place a couple of times over the last 100 years and I assume it's going to take place uh, in the future. I can identify ways of avoiding this decline but one of the disciplines is that whatever we do for one period of time, for example one year, it has to be relevant. It has to contribute or at least not detract in value over the entire 100 year period. So this is just a bias that we need to understand and accept. The third known bias are declines at the end of the exceptional macro MRI. In another video, I describe the market resilience indexes, the MRI, and how they relate to the decisions that we make about how to position the portfolios with respect to the stock market. Now, the exceptional macro MRI is a very important MRI, and it tends to foreshadow the beginning of a longer term trend higher and looking at many markets around the world, that's by and large true. The main purpose is again, the first part, identifying the bottom, the trough. But when that exceptional macro MRI ends, there can often be price declines. And we can see that in this, this index. And this is the MSCI Australia index. And I selected it because it's a good example of how the termination or the end of the exceptional macro MRI foreshadows price declines. We see that occurring every few years. There is a rapid decline often followed by a quick recovery and that's the important part that when the exceptional macro ends it is quite a shock but it doesn't foreshadow by itself a longer term decline in prices. So by and large we just accept that decline. And we try to be aware of that and try not to put money in just before that exceptional macro ends. But it's difficult to do that 100% of the time. At the time period indicated on the chart in the red ellipse, we can see the exceptional macro end and prices declined immediately thereafter. We can see that in this period, in this period as well, here and here. And it's a common feature. And it happens periodically in all major indexes. And it's just something that we have to be uh, aware of and tolerant of. And again, the important point is that the end of the exceptional macro MRI does not by itself indicate a long protracted decline in the stock market. So it's better just to write it out all else equal. In an evaluation of markets around the world over long periods of time, it's better to participate in the upside associated with the exceptional macro and the decline that comes at the end of the exceptional macro period rather than to sell out too early. We can mitigate this issue by avoiding adding money at the peaks in prices. And in another video, I talk about the money moving seasons, which is a way of identifying the peaks and troughs on a short term basis. And there are ways of mitigating this issue by using a broad range of rotation signals. The fourth bias that subscribers should be aware of are price declines related to news of the day. As I've mentioned in other videos, forecasting specific events and how they're going to unfold and how the market is going to respond to those events is futile. It's really difficult to do that on a long term basis. We can always find individuals who anticipated the outcome of a political issue or an economic issue, but it's unusual to find someone who does that on a regular basis over long periods of time. When we have a time horizon lasting 15 years, it is crucial to have a systematic way of rotating our ETFs that don't rely on specific forecasts of events in the news of the day. There is a better long-term trade-off to estimate the market's resilience and buy at the bottom of a resilience cycle and sell at the top. In a sense, we're betting on the nature of a recovery for any declines that may take place as a result of news of the day, rather than the news of the day event itself. Items related to news of the day are political events and announcements, natural disasters, other events that in fact do affect the market. 
Now it's important to note that a protracted series of news items, for example, a, a political trend that begins to gather momentum can influence the resilience cycles, but that takes place over a period of several months or quarters. This is a summary slide that shows the upper risk mix in the tan line, the model portfolio on the blue line, and we see declines associated perhaps with news of the day, and that occurs at various points. This particular point is when the exceptional macro ended. This arrow indicates a news of the day item. This peak was associated with the end of an exceptional macro period. And so these declines do take place. They're all part of the performance pattern that overall is very attractive, but there are periods of losses and disappointing performance compared to the benchmarks that have been identified. This arrow indicates where the slope of the upper risk mix is steeper than the slope of the model portfolio, indicating that the model portfolio is underperforming that upper risk mix. And this is the late stage of an ascending market. And sure enough, we see the market move lower after that time period. Over the time period shown, it happens again at this point. The slope of this line, the tan line, is steeper than the slope of the traded mix. The known and expected biases that subscribers should be aware of and patient with are the underperformance relative to the upper risk mix in the late stage of an ascending market. Number two, declines after strong spikes up in, the, in stock returns such as 1987. Number three, the declines at the ends of resilience provided by the exceptional macro MRI and declines because of the news of the day.